What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Redneck TV channel. And today, we are not behaving in an entertainment style character. I'm just gonna be more or less myself on this video, see if y'all still care about my existence by the end of it. But yeah, as promised last video, we're doing everything we need to do to be able to fix my baby. Her name is Hazy. I named her that when I first got her. If you haven't watched my video from seven years ago, it says, my new truck. Little picture of little old me. In front of my truck before she was stock and all beaten up. Before she turned into a mud truck. Little story behind that name. First time ever turning the key on and starting it. Sitting in it. Started it. I heard the motor. Dude, I'm like trying to tear up right now. Like, this is how much this truck means to me, bro. I started it up. And then the radio just turned on to Hot 96. That Ariana Grande song. Something about you makes me feel like a dangerous woman. I feel like the truck was singing to me, you know what I'm saying? Telling me that I make her feel like a dangerous woman. Because if you didn't know, before this truck used to be my uncle's, and then I bought it from him. It's like she was just so excited to have a new owner. All my uncle did was just drive it to work back and forth, probably put it around. She sees old young me, hearing me talk about all the plans I want to do to her, about how I want to raw dog her out. Something about you. So that got me thinking, I was like, huh, dangerous. Synonym for that, hazardous. My name's Kenny, Hazy. That's just where it came from, bro. Brother. Comments asking, Hazy? What a weird name for a truck. Where'd that come from? There's the story. If you didn't watch the last video, what we did, we have a cracked bell housing. Extension collar was broken like a puzzle piece. We don't have a welder. We just JB welded it or a gorilla weld epoxy. And I had it clumped up all over the mountain surfaces. I got a little electric sander. I sanded it down. It'll be a flush mountain surface. I'm just hoping it works, man. But before we put it back together, I want to douse it in silicone. Regardless, I didn't get it machine style perfect when I put it back together with the JB Weld. There's gonna be a little bit of gappage somewhere. So to prevent any leaks, I'm gonna cake it up in silicone. Transmission fluid back here. Just a bunch of empty jugs. Sec, this one has maybe a cord in it. We're gonna have to buy some tranny fluid. So I'm gonna have to go into town, get some silicone. Taking my big sexy side chick, wondering what her name is, Quickie. Shouldn't have to have any further elaboration on that. <laughs> Somebody's got a Mario card on that. They only had a really big tube of silicone. I've never got a metal tube of it before. Maybe we can use some of this. Cat back on when we're done and maybe it won't harden up on us. I really don't think this is going to work, guys. It's good content to try, at least. One question I do have, where are all my bolts at? All right, these are the transfer case bolts right here. These must be the transmission extension collar bolts. It's just so hard to keep up with bolts. Dirt floor gravel garage, man. Hopefully one of these days I can afford to pave this, put concrete in here. Make life a lot easier. Put some pressure on this tranny. Speaking of topic of finances, I got four quarts of transmission fluid and just this thing of silicone, dude. 56 bucks. Man. So yeah, if y'all want to support me in my pursuit of making content for y'all, make sure y'all go to rntvshop.com. Get yourself some merchandise. Dude, this can't be right. This is not coming out at all, man. Must be a seal in here that wasn't busted all the way. Dude, I did not just waste 30 bucks on this shit. Like, there's no way this is right. Get a bigger hole in it. First, we're going to try this. Yep. This is gonna be a mess. Looks like it's our only option right now. Now we can get to the silicone. What a waste of 30 bucks. Didn't really have any other option. Make sure we put the cap on so we don't ruin our silicone. Ah, we got it all over our pants. Hopefully all the silicone that I caked up into the bolt holes will act as Loctite. Good thing about having a dirt floor garage, you got cake shit all over your hands, just stick your fingers in the dirt, comes right off. Get up there, baby. <clears throat> to come up a little bit, the tranny. <sighs> oh, fuck. Dude, I almost died right there, man. Probably caved my nose in. Gasket's still seated, be all right. Get off. Come on now. Come on, dude, what is this? I don't know what you're doing. All right, thank you. 
<laughs> now we got to bench press this transfer case. Imagine it's going to be a lot easier than it used to be. <sighs> I just gotta brag about how easy that was for me, bro. Woo! Can you do me a favor, dude? Can you hand me that wrench? Appreciate it. Oh, my weenus. Let's get this cross member in now. Hey. Right, finally. Transfer case in, everything's bolted up, cross member in. Now, I'm just gonna waste the rest of this silicone, take it all up where it's cracked. That way, if it does crack, got some type of flexible bond up there. Might turn it from a straight up pour to just a drip where I can make it home. About a tube's worth up there, I'd say. But we can't drive it around right now anyway. We gotta let that silicone dry. I'm excited, man. Be a little upset if as soon as I start it up, it starts pouring out. I think it'll last for a little bit. Here we can gather the funds to buy a beefed up billet extension collar and billet transmission something more beefy to handle the gears while we're letting that dry i'm gonna go take a shower and we're gonna go hit the gym guys do y'all know what we're about to do <laughs> oh i'm so excited man finally we got it all back together it's all dried had the battery on charge hey, we're, we're all prepared today man it's been so long since i've drove this f-150 for the first time in months y'all are seeing me in boots I'm saying, bro, gotta dress up nice to drive my baby. I'm going on a date tonight. That is if she doesn't start spewing out tranny fluid. I ended up not working on the motor. Since the battery died, all the codes got deleted. So I got my tuner. I took it off my truck. I'm gonna plug it into this one. That way, when I'm driving down the road, I can get statistics and data. And then after driving it today, all the codes should pop back up. Then we can start from square one again, find out all the sensors we need, what we need to change. And if everything goes good today, man, we are going to romp the piss out of in my field literally i'm gonna try to break it also when we get down there into town i ended up not recording my workout sesh that other night so we're gonna record tonight's which is arms i hardly ever do arm days so we're gonna get some of that footage for y'all tonight frank her up baby that is weird it's never done that Come on, baby. She wanted it. I hope I'm not out of fuel. Gosh! Fucking stupid. Jump starter sucks. Is it pouring tranny fluid out? Are you fucking kidding me? Leaking something. Oh my gosh. King serious. Gosh, dude. Whatever. Damn fuel line's leaking, man. Ah! I guess when I was taking the transfer case out, I wasn't careful enough. Bump the rusty bastard. <sighs> not smart at all i didn't do anything at all for me productively i'm not smart it's one problem after another no ending it's a fool <laughs> shut up look at that it's just <sighs> might as well put this thing on trickle gosh man <laughs> dang just go see how much a fuel line is yeah, nothing that happens. I'm still going into town, getting y'all some arm content. I guess I'll run by AutoZone down there, see what the pricing is on the fuel line. Also, I have two bolts I need to pick up. Because when I took the tranny off, I lost the transmission mount bolts. So I just took them off the cross member for now. So I'm going to go pick up two nuts. All right. Midnight right now. Really don't feel like working out at all. I'm absolutely not working out in boots. Go ahead and switch to our gym attire. Dang. Start out a little warm up, warm up a rotator cuffs. Then I always do a few pull ups. Start out, hit some arms. Probably gonna go a little heavy tonight. Easy bar curls. I like to start off light. My biceps nice and warmed up. Ah. Forgot the clips. 
Got a 35 on each. I think this is the heaviest I'm gonna go tonight. 95 pounds. That went up a lot easier than I anticipated. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw another five on there. Make it a 40 pounds even on each side. 105 pounds. Kind of just ego lifting at this point to have the three digit numbers for my curls. If I can hit this for eight reps, somewhat decent form, I'll be pretty happy with it. A lot harder than I anticipated. I had to struggle for that last one. We got a pretty solid eight. I prefer to use this bar for skull crushers because the hand placement is a lot better. I feel like you get more activation. I'm just gonna add a 10, try to get it for 12. I am a little bit bicep dominant. My triceps are kind of lacking behind, more of a pull guy. Form might suffer on these next few sets, but that's okay. We're just wanting to kind of get heavy weight right now. And in this session, we're also gonna do a few more workouts that are more form centered, where I try to achieve perfect form over just moving weight around. I like to do a little bit of both. <laughs> We're gonna add another 10 on just to force my triceps to be sp stronger than my biceps. Something silly might happen. <laughs> oh. Too damn heavy. Now we're just gonna do some hammer style curls with the rope and I'm really gonna focus on the squeeze up top. Ain't gonna lie, brother, feeling fat and small. Like, I just feel like I got a lot softer look. I don't know if it's some of the vitamins I started taking. Did some research, it said something about certain forms of vitamin B causing fat gain. I don't know if I've been overdoing it with the vitamin B or if it's because I started taking vitamin D3. It says that can cause bloating as well. I just feel fat. Fat, what it is, man. Obliques ain't showing as much as normal. Definitely put on some a little bit of chub. Not taking creatine, quit taking that about a month ago. Honestly, thinking about starting creatine again, I've lost strength after stopping it. Now I was losing a little bit of hair from creatine, I think, or I'm just getting older and I'm just paranoid about it, but screw it, you know? Decent arm pump tonight. Not terrible, but we got what we need to fix those fuel lines. We're gonna go to the house first thing tomorrow morning. Slap them on, baby. That blue line right there, that's the one. That must have been rubbing for a while. All right, you got a clean cut there. Line's not mashed. Really, I don't like to use rubber hoses because they can expand, possible, but I mean, it's a mud truck. I think it'll be okay. Like that bit's clearly too fucking small, man. I wonder if this will fit on it, a quarter inch. Perhaps I did it too fast and I stripped it out.
but it's not tightening anymore. Very cool, man. Not very cool. Why, why would they sell these as fucking AutoZone if they're shit? Why would they sell these? Made in Mexico. Go figure. Oh, that's racist, Kenny. Fuck you. Mexican food sucks. Okay, that was a lie. And then it broke. <laughs> yeah. Put a third one on up here at the top. Transmission's gonna leak. The fuel lines are gonna leak. No more contact with the transfer case. Please start, baby. Moment of truth, guys. Are you ready? Oh, stop me up. Stop me up. I'll never stop. Come on, baby. I think that fuel line might have been a problem for a little bit, man. I think it was dripping. Oh yeah, it's idling good. No fluids pouring out the bottom. On the GoPro right now, about to start it up. See, she goes into drive. We put four quarts of tran tranny fluid in it. After I put it in drive, cycled it through the gears, put it in neutral, checked it while I was running. Found out I'm really low on tranny fluid, thankfully, because it wasn't pulling at all. So if I had tranny fluid in it, that means my tranny's bad. But now we're about to drive it. We may have to stop somewhere, get more tranny fluid. Just depends how it's driving. And if it doesn't start leaking, I might not try to break it like I was saying, but I, I, I'll be hard on it. It's the moment of truth. Oh shit, just broke my garage. Oh, dang. But now I know my truck will fit in there. <laughs> Could have shattered the windshield. Ugh. Yeah, we definitely got to go get tranny fluid ASAP. If I was smart, I would take that truck to go get more and go, but nah, I'm not. Guys, <sighs> y'all probably already know what I'm about to tell y'all. Dang it, man. Woohoo! I mean, it's not a big pile, but I mean, it's still there. Farmed it yet, but it could just be old fluid. 95% chance that it's not. But I've come to a conclusion, okay? I've been saying that the transmission keeps breaking because the gears are too strong for it. Never really made sense to me anyway. When you put a higher gear ratio in, it takes away the stress from the transmission, transfer case, your drive line, and adds it to the rear end. So I was driving it today. I don't know why I didn't notice this before. My rear end was shaking, man. I do believe, kind of kept a secret from y'all. I was so impatient to get my F-150 done when I was doing the gears, just for stupid reasons. Two things I did incorrect. Everything else was fine. I did all the shimming right other than on the pinion. I pressed the bearing onto the pinion shaft before I put any shims on it. And I was like, ah, oh. I wanted to get my truck done that day, man. I had no other vehicle. I'd been stuck in my house for like three weeks. Hadn't talked to a single human being in person in weeks. Like I was going crazy out here, man. I needed to get my truck done. This was back last year. At the time, I didn't have anybody that would take me to go get one or I didn't have money for one, one of them. He said I couldn't remove the bearing without breaking it. I think that's what it was. You had to saw it off. I got the shims that I needed. I didn't press it on all the way when I realized that if I got the shims and I snipped them, like a little slit on them, kind of bent them up and then crammed them up under the gear and then folded them back, pressed it down. And I just was like, hopefully it doesn't, why would I do that? So dumb. And also when I put the silicone on the rear end, I was so impatient that I didn't even let the silicone dry. I took off driving in like two or three hours. So it was shaking decent amount above 45 mile an hour so i was staying below i got to napa took my drain plug out on the rear end bone dry man no fluid in it the magnet had all kinds of crud on it so i might have cooked them bearings all up in there running it with no fluid or that shim fell out regardless i know about it i think our only thing we can do now got to tear back into that rear end pulsar 2.8 quarts i used a full quart and then three quarters of one so it was really low but after i put fluid in it it stopped shaking a lot more still got a little bit of wobble and i do think that is the cause causing vibration to go up the drive shaft wiggle the transmission and ultimately crack my aluminum extension collar and the back of my transmission every time so yeah that first transmission i put in it absolutely useless like I, I did all that work last christmas for nothing but now i think we're gonna have to get a new transmission i've 
I raw dog out. But I'm gonna take it for a drive and show y'all. I know I said I was gonna literally try to break it. When I want to try to break it is when when i think i've got everything dialed in and i think everything's good to go to hit the trail that's when i want to just absolutely thrash it but i mean i know if i thrash it, it's just going to shatter that extension collar again then i won't be able to drive it at all either that or worse it could, could ruin the rear end i got back there but maybe i can kind of show y'all what's going on here transmission I got is junk. Well, I did get it from a junkyard, so. Now, let's go ahead and turn around, get her back home. I'm gonna check the tranny fluid. Oh, fuck. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't get me stranded. That's my girl. Atta girl. She's my baby. Don't fall in a ditch, please. Something's gotta be up there. See, like, it's not kicking into gear. The wobbling kind of simmers out when you get fast. From 40 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour, it's wobbling bad. It's idling so high right now. Look at this. Oh yeah, that makes me happy. It's not low on tranny fluid. It actually has too much in it. Trans pan is all, is all bent up. So really there's no way to indicate what level we really need. Take that trans pan off, waste about 40 bucks on the transmission filter. Knowing that's not gonna fix it at all or do anything. But I mean, we could at least try, you know? I don't know, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Transmission might be kicking in and out something electronically. I felt like the old transmission did something similar, but not to that extent. If any of y'all have any advice, maybe some input might help me out in the comments. Let me know. Other than if you're a 14 year old that doesn't even know where a drain plug is at. I know what you need to do. Sell it and get you a Chevy ball. <laughs> yee yee. Shut up. All right. That's all I got for y'all today. Yeah, I know. Very tragic that y'all didn't get any thrashing Ford content, but I really don't want to mess it up, man. I want to drive it to town at least once. Drive it on them old back roads that I used to drive on as a kid just for nostalgia purposes. Then I'll probably take it back here. Just thrash it till whatever breaks, breaks. I would do that out, that old back roads on the mud holes, but if I did that, my truck would be stranded an hour away. I'm not pulling that 6.0 into some mud to go get it. Maybe if I was big time YouTube balling, I wouldn't care. Hopefully one day I don't. But anyways, guys, y'all enjoyed today's video. Make sure you let me know by leaving this video with a thumbs up. Helps with the algorithm if y'all just leave a comment and a like. Make sure you add me on Snapchat, Kenny G Fitness. Follow my Instagram, RNTV15. And I'll catch you next time on the Redneck TV channel. Later. Later.